All right, in this video, we're going to look at a exercise involving matching a particular limit with the derivative uh, formula, or the derivative equation, rather, or the derivative definition. And we've got two to choose from, and we can probably tell based on the, the look of each of them which one they should match to. So it says each limit represents the derivative of some function f at some number a, state such an f and a in each case. So you can see the first one is the derivative of some function evaluated at some a value. I think we can tell that it's probably using the a plus h definition. So this is clearly going to be the limit as x goes, uh, h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. So hopefully it's obvious that a is clearly a 1, right? It's basically in the same spot. So this is the derivative. This is the derivative of f of x equals something evaluated at x equals 1. So what is that function? Well, hopefully with a little uh, intuition, you can see that that function is x to the 10th. So really what we've evaluated here is the limit as h goes to 0. Well, let me note this this way. And it's f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 divided by h. Let's just kind of check it here. So we basically are claiming now that this is that and this is that. So let's see, based on what we noted here, let's check if that's true. So f of 1 plus h, if we're saying that f of x is x to the 10th, well, it's just 1 plus h to the 10th. So that one worked. All right. And the other thing we'd want to check is that f of 1 is equal to 1, but f of 1 is just 1 to the 10th, according to what we wrote. So that checks out too. So it's the derivative of f of x equals x to the 10th evaluated at x equals 1. Now, there's, it didn't ask us to evaluate it, but if you know the power rule, it's pretty quick to evaluate. The answer should be 10. And that just shows you that there are ways of evaluating limits without actually having to do algebra, right? You'd never be expected to do the algebra on that limit and expand it out. It would be an, an, an insane problem. But you can note that it's the definition of the derivative. Let's try this one here. Uh, same idea, it's definitely an x plus h definition. Let's say that this, in order, in order to save on some writing, let's just see if we can do it a little more quickly. So this is the derivative. This is f prime of, now the x value uh, appears to be, or the, the, the x value where we're finding the derivative appears to be 16. And the function, hopefully you can tell, is the fourth root of x. Okay, so let's just check that. Again, it has to fit this form up here, a plus h, the uh, a plus h definition. So let's just check it. So um, this here is supposed to be f of a plus h. So f of 16 plus h, given that our function is the fourth root of x, as that's our claim, so that would be this fourth root of 16 plus h. That's what we see there. And this is supposed to be f of uh, f, uh, f of um, 16, right? Because it's f of a, and a is 16. That's what we're claiming. So f of 16 is the fourth root of 16, which is 2. So that worked as well. This next one's probably a little easier because um, it's this, the left the left form. Um, and A is just staring us right in the face, right? Clearly, the, the derivative is being, uh, this is the definition of the derivative evaluated at x equals 5. So I'm going to write this is f prime of 5, where f of x equals, and again, this one's a little easier because f of x is just in the top left part of this expression, so it's just clearly 2 to the x. Okay, again, you can test that, right? You just, um, f of 5 is 32, which is located right here. That's what we want. 
and everything fit, uh, checks out. Ultimately, you'd be expected to evaluate this limit, but the way you do it is you evaluate it by understanding it's a derivative and using rules and techniques, not actually doing algebra. And we finish with this one. This is, uh, again, using the x minus a definition. So I can clearly see that this is f prime of pi over 4, where f of x equals, and the function is in the top left there, is clearly tangent of x. Okay. So we were. this was just an exercise in identifying these limits as derivatives. If you were asked to evaluate them, um, what you'd have to do is you'd have to know these derivatives. So for instance, at some point you'll learn, at some point you'll learn that uh, the derivative of tangent of x, right? So if f of x equals tangent of x, like in a later part of your calculus experience, you'll learn that its derivative is secant squared. And then when you plug in pi over four, you'll get that this is secant squared of pi over four and the secant of 45 degrees is root 2. Root 2 squared is 2. So this limit is going to equal 2. If you don't know that yet, you could always just cheat with the calculator, as I'm doing here. And you just take note of the function here in Desmos. The derivative at pi over 4 is 2, which is what we did by hand. The key thing is if you're taking AP Calculus, you want to be able to recognize some limits as being the form of a derivative and you evaluate them by noting that, not actually doing any algebra.